Hello and welcome to Jeanette's TV. Today we are live on location at the Stratford Perth Museum to talk everything Justin Bieber with John Kastner, who's the general manager. Welcome to Jeanette's TV and Jeanette's TV podcast, John. Well, thanks for having us. It's always a pleasure. And it's always great to do these kind of interviews. So today we're talking all things Beaver, and this this um, museum has a special designated Justin Bieber display because he grew up here. Can you tell us a little bit more about how the exhibit came to be and some of the key items that we can see here? Sure. I mean, we had talked uh, about a Bieber exhibit for a number of years, and then in 2017, uh, we met his grandparents, and we had a conversation with them. And really for us, one of the real questions was, uh, will there be enough stuff to make an honest to good exhibit? Uh, we went over and visited their house, invited over there, and Michaela, who looks after our exhibits, and myself. And it was almost like a museum itself. I mean, we, t we looked at, you know, not tens of items or hundreds of items, but maybe a thousand items to go through. And we came back and we made a determination that we could have an exhibit that would be an honest to goodness museum exhibit. Subsequent to that, we decided it was gonna be fairly small. It was in a room, a gallery, about 10 by 12. Uh, when it got announced in the local paper, and this is one of the interesting things, is that uh, they went in the local paper on a Thursday afternoon and went online. Uh, a couple hours later, Canadian press called. A couple hours after that, somebody else called. And then the Friday, uh, I came here to work and there were three TV crews here when I got to work Friday morning. Uh, that night I was on The National, that night I was on CTV News. Uh, People Magazine and Billboard Magazine. And uh, we came back to work Monday and said, we can't have a tiny little modest exhibit with the amount of media attention that this has gotten already. So we put it into this gallery that you and I are in right now, and it's over a thousand square feet. It's one of the largest exhibits we've ever mounted. Right. And some of the key features we're gonna see here are Haley and just Justin's wedding pictures, um, just like walk me through some of the highlights that represent highlights in his in Justin's career. Yeah, so I think the thing what we tried to do, you know, where you and I are sitting right now, we put up the uh, replica of the front of the Avon Theater where he was discovered. So two things, it's it's very significant to his career. But the other thing about it, it turned into a great selfie spot for us. And we've literally had tens of thousands of pictures taken here. We have his first drum set where a local group put together a fundraiser to sort of get his career started. We sourced out those drums. It took us about two days to find out where they were. They were in a storage unit north of Barry, and we tracked those down, those came to us. And then at the other end of the spectrum, he played in the NBA All-Star game and came in with, a, with the jersey in a, in a grocery bag and said, would you like to add this to the exhibit? His mom and dad, he, and he came in after the wedding and brought all sorts of stuff from the wedding that, we've, that we put on display and updated the exhibit. But we've got everything, that, like from his library card to track and field medals to the surfboards that are Teen Choice Awards uh, to letters from Michelle Obama. We've, it really runs the gamut of his career. Everything from him as a little kid, you know, where he won an athletic award in grade eight, uh, the Rubik's Cube that he took ever with, with him, right up to, you know, his success now and uh, film with him and James Corden and you know, things like that that really run the gamut from him as a little kid Right up to right up to when he got married. Okay, great. So that is the actual exhibit. But now I want to talk to you about Justin Bieber, who I know you've met a few times. He's come home. He's come back to Stratford. He's come in here, and I want to talk about the family influences. Um, so, in particular, his mother was very instrumental in getting his career going. Can you comment on that? And can you also comment on Justin himself and some of the changes you've seen in him? from the early days to where he is now? Oh, very much so. I mean, my previous to me being here, I, w I worked at the local newspaper, so I sort of knew the Justin Bieber story before before it started here. Uh, we talked to Patty, his mom, regularly. We did stories regularly. And I still remember the weekend uh, where she had called the paper and said, just to let you know, we're going down to Atlanta this weekend and we're gonna sign a music contract. Uh, we're gonna sign a contract and it's either with Justin Timberlake or with Usher and Scooter Braun's involved. And at the time it was, okay, you know, here was a kid in grade eight, and uh, I remember calling the newspaper Monday and said, well, we've signed a contract, and he's, he's signed a recording contract with Scooter Braun and Usher, and really? And that was sort of the first sort of, 
wow moment. And then ironically, three, four months later, uh, he's on the Ellen Show and you know, he's in Good Morning America and all of a sudden he's everywhere. And uh, one of the jokes around here, it, it didn't take very long for him to become an overnight sensation. Like he, literally in three or four months, now he's on national TV and he's you know, part of the movie, Never Seen Ever. A year later, he sells out Madison Square Gardens twice in 10 minutes. And you know, those sorts of things that were really astounding. And Patty, you know, her involvement, one of the things we have here is her laptop. And we thought that that was really an important thing to have here. She posted YouTube videos on it that were, where he became one of the first breakout YouTube stars. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about Sun Studios is how people got started. And for Elvis and, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis and Johnny Cash, that was their start. For him, it was the steps of the Avon Theater and YouTube. And really the first person that used social media, that platform, to A, get discovered, and then B, get signed, and then really use those platforms to uh, create a massive following. So a couple of questions. You know, there's a lot of women watching my show with talented kids that they would like to have, you know, a similar story to what happened to Justin and have that kind of fame. And in fact, the exhibit is called Steps to Success. You even wrote a book called Steps to Success. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. And I want to go back to what I was asking you. Were those steps to success a little too quick coming for Justin? Did it change him? I mean, we, we all know he you know, had some incidences in the public eye where he was not acting very nicely and it was reported that he, you know, had become uh, heavily involved in drugs, which I understand now is not the case. He's married and he's happily married and he's, you know, more into religion now. But what do you think those steps did to him? And, and was the fame a little bit too uh, quick in coming to actually change him to get in involved in the wrong things? Yeah, I think there's two things there. One, it is incredible. Uh, it, it was an incredible experience. I mean, here he went from, you know, being a kid in grade eight, uh, you know, just about to go into high school, and all of a sudden he's spirited out of school in April of grade eight, and that's it. That's it for that's it for his formal education. You know, he took he had tutors and everything so he could complete high school. But but what an incredible change at a time in life when you are really in your formative years. Mm -hmm. So some of the trouble he got into, I can say two things. One is I, it, it's not particularly surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, Even who was hanging out with him. And, and also I think about ourselves, when we think about the trouble we got into and as kids in grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, and that was often with limited resources. You know, we didn't have, we, we didn't have $65 million a year. So instead of uh, you know, going to the movies somewhere else, we fly to LA to an NBA game you know, in a private jet. So there's, there's certainly that. At the end of the day, I can say that uh, certainly the experience we've had with him here uh, doesn't really reflect that now. Uh, he's been here a number of times, four or five times. And I think even in talking to people like uh, the Anne Frank House, mm -hmm. where there was a major incident there, supposedly, mm -hmm. even people at the Anne Frank House said that it was really not uh, totally accurately re re reflected, that in many ways he was very respectful, he was very interested. People around him, maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. But all in all, uh, I think there's two things. One, he certainly got in some trouble, there's no denying that. To it may be amplified more than what we think. Mm -hmm. And finally, the last chapter of that is, when he's been here, he's been unbelievably respectful. He's been uh, gracious. He poses for all sorts of photos with staff. He's unbelievably appreciative. And um, this exhibit's been really important to the museum. Mm -hmm. And he could have said no, or Scooter Braun, or his mom and dad, or uh, his grandpa, a hundred times. They had opportunity to say, no, we don't want you to do this. And every step along the way, they've been great. Okay, well, they're also very instrumental in the community. He is basically a community-oriented guy. He's got very strong family values, strong religious values. He's probably more reflective now that he's getting a bit older. It's coming back, his roots. Um, so just in closing, because i got about two minutes left on this interview, yeah. I want to give you a shout-out for your book, and I wanted you to tell us the steps to success. What are the, like, in, give me the two top steps to success. Well, I think for one, when we look at, we look at Justin Bieber, the one thing is, without question, when you watch these videos of him as a kid, where he steps up and plays a guitar, or plays the drums, or sings, or, or plays a keyboard, an unbelievable level of talent. 
Like there's no question mm -hmm. that he had, you know, for to coin a phrase, God-given talent. He really did. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second part about it was very early on, you know, as a kid in grade five or grade six or grade seven, you know, we've got a couple quotes up around on the wall here mm -hmm. that he had in his book. You know, I was born to be somebody. And he was absolutely determined that he was going to be somebody. Yeah. And uh, when you look at the Never Seen Ever movie, you look at some of the documents we have here and some of the footage we have here, he was determined he was going to be someone and he was going to put in the time and he was going to do the work. I mean, Scooter Braun in the movie Never Seen Ever talks about how there wasn't a disc jockey in the United States that hadn't met him in person. Mm. That he, you know, rode around in the van for six months mm. uh, from radio station to radio station and, and put in the work. So two things. One, obvious talent. Two, worked hard. Worked hard to become better. Okay. Well, he also had good support from his mom and the rest of his family, and that's, I think, important too, as well as what you said. So just to close off here, uh, tell us how we can come into the museum, what it costs, when is it open, and where we can find that book of yours. Yeah, so uh, the museum is Stratford Perth Museum, of course. We're located 300 meters west of Stratford. Uh, we're open 360 days a year from 10 to 4. It costs $7 for adults, $6 for seniors and students. Uh, you can get all sorts of information on stratfordperthmuseum.ca. The book, Steps to Stardom, which I wrote a year ago, is uh, not only available here, but it's available chapters in Indigo, and it's available online through the museum as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much for this wonderful interview. And uh, thank you for being with us today on Jeanette's TV. If you're looking for things to do with your family during COVID and you want to take a little drive, come out here and see this great museum. I'm Jeanette Burke, your host, signing off. Please remember to like, comment, and share all our posts with your family and friends. You will find us everywhere, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, Instagram TV, everywhere, hashtag Jeanette's TV. And if you could, just take a look in the description below to see the link for my new Patreon account. We've got great donation levels with great prizes, including Jeanette's TV t-shirts, and Jeanette's TV a sweatshirt, so you get your pick with your donation level. Again, thanks so much for being with us, and until next time, continue to be fabulous.